Hi, good day. This is Sir Dadeles Papilia again. We will discuss about fingerprints. Dactyloscopy is the science of fingerprint. It derived from the words dactyl, which means fingers, and scopen, which means to examine. Fingerprint. As an impression, it is the reproduction on some smooth surfaces of the pattern or design formed by the ridges on the inside on the last joint at the fingers or thumb to the medium of ink or any coloring substance capable of producing visibility. As a science, it is the identification of person by means of ridges appearing in the fingers, on the palms, and on the soles of the feet. Fingerprinting It is a method of identification of an individual to the use of the impression made by the ridge formation found in the terminal part of the fingers as a means of personal identification is a positive science. What are the allied science of fingerprint? The first one, chiroscopy, the science that deals with the study of the palm print in relation to identification. Second one, podoscopy, the science that deals with the study of sole of human foot for identification purposes. The third one, Proscopy, the science that deals with the study of the human pores for sweat gland. What are the three principles of fingerprint identification? The first one, principle of individuality. It states that there are no two persons having the same fingerprints. It is based on a statistical probability that it will be impossible for any two persons to have similar fingerprints. Second one, Principle of permanency states that once ridges are fully developed, their general arrangement remains the same throughout a person's life. The third one, principle of infallibility states that fingerprints is a reliable positive means of identification. What are the importance or value of fingerprints? First one, prevent impersonation. Second, Used for the identification of missing person. Third, help to identify victims of disasters, calamities, floods, etc. Fourth one, identify bodies whose cadavers are beyond recognition. Fifth, identifying for investigation purposes. And the last one, detecting criminal activity through fingerprints collected at the scene in determining recidivism or being a repeated offender. Facts about fingerprint 60% of people have loops, 35% have pearls, and 5% have arches. Fingerprint analysis These are their individual features. In a core, core in a loop fingerprint, this is the center of the loop, delta. In a loop in rural patterns, this is an area where ridges meet from three directions. There is usually one delta on a loop and two or more on a whirl. Ridge end. Notice where individual ridges come to an end. Bifurcation. Notice where a ridge divides into two ridges like a fork in a road. Island. Notice any short ridges out of, from others. Crossover. Notice where any ridges appear to cross over each other. You can notice the individual features of the bifurcation the core, island, and the delta. What are the fingerprint classes or fingerprint types? There are three specific classes or types of fingerprints. For all fingerprints based upon their visual pattern, these are arch, loops, and whirls. Each group is divided into smaller groups as seen in the list below. That is arch, Loop, whirl. Other arch there is are there are plain arch, tented arch. Loop there are radial loop, owner loop, and whirl there are plain whirl, central packet whirl, double loop whirl, and accidental whirl. Arches, arches are the simplest type of fingerprints that are formed by ridges that enter on one side of the print and exit on the other. No deltas are present. Plain arch. Plain arch is a pattern in which the ridges flows from one side to the other or flows towards 
without recurving, usually having a slight upward curve in the center, making the pattern like an arch. It has no core and no delta considered to the simplest type of pattern. Tented Arch Tented arch is a type of pattern where majority of the ridges form an arch. It only differs from the plain arch where one or more ridges at the center shape a tent or make a rise giving the pattern of a tent, giving an angle of 90 degrees or less, or one with an up truss having an angle of 45 degrees or more. We will now proceed to loops. Loops must have one delta and one more ridges that enter and leave on the same side. These patterns are named for their positions related to the radius and ulna bones. An example. The bone, the loop opening, is facing towards. The radial and ulnar loop. Radial loop is a loop in which the downward slope or the slanting ridges run towards the direction of a thumb. Ulnar loop, this is a loop in which slanting ridges run towards the direction of the little finger. It is also important to know from what hands it was taken to differentiate a radial from an ulnar loop. Loop ridge counting is the process of counting the ridges that touch or cross an imaginary line between the delta and core of a loop. A wide space must always intervene between the delta and the first ridge to be counted. Okay, we will now proceed to whirl. Whirl, this refers to the pattern consisting of a core and two or more deltas. Whirl have at least one ridge that makes pretense to make a complete circuit. They also have at least two deltas. If a print has more than two deltas, it is most likely an accidental whirl. Plain whirl. Plain whirl is a pattern consisting of two deltas and at least one ridge makes a turn through a complete circuit. An imaginary line drawn between the two deltas must touch or cross at least one of the recurving ridges within the pattern area. The pattern could be a spiral, oval, circular, or any variant of a circle. And the elements of a plane world is, first one is a complete circuit, second one is two deltas, and the third one is at least one circuiting ridge is touched or crossed by an imaginary line traversing between the two deltas. Central Packet Loop Whirl A pattern which possesses two deltas with one or more ridges forming a complete circuit which may be oval, spiral, circular, or any variant of a circle where it is a pattern consisting of two deltas with one or more recurving ridges with an obstruction at the right angle to the inner line of flow between which an imaginary line would touch or cross no recurving ridge within the inner pattern area. The elements of central packet loop whirl is first one, at least one recurving ridge or obstruction at the right angle. Second, two deltas. Third one, two recurving ridge between the pattern area is touched or crossed by an imaginary line drawn between the two deltas. The double loop whirl. This is a pattern consisting of two separate and distinct loop formations with sets of shoulders and two deltas. The loops do not necessarily have to be part of the same length and size. The elements of double loop whirl are number one, two separate loop formation, second, two separate and distinct sets of shoulders, and the third one, two deltas. Accidental whirl. This is a pattern consisting of combination of two different types of pattern such as a loop and a whirl, a loop and a central pocket loop, or any combination of two different loop and whirl pattern type. But it cannot be a combination of plain arch with any other pattern. It can have two or more deltas. So what are the elements of accidental whirl? First one, combination of two different type of pattern with the exceptions of plain arch. The second one, two or more deltas. We will now proceed to latent prints. Latent prints are impression left by friction ridge skin on a surface, such as a tool, handle, glass, door, etc. 
The word latent was derived from a Latin word which means something indistinct or something hidden. At present, the word latent prints is generally used to refer to all forms of fingerprints that are found at the scene of the crime. Moreover, latent prints have been defined as the markings of oily matter or perspiration from the skin glands left upon any surface that the hands and fingers may have touched. These are in most cases perceptible by the naked eye, although in some extent they are highly latent, being so indistinct or invisible, thus a need for developing or disclosure process. There are three classes of latent prints, visible latent prints, invisible latent prints, and semi-visible latent prints. Visible prints, these refer to the prints which can easily be recognized or noticeable even to an amateur technician. Visible prints can also be divided into two forms, those made by contamination with colored substance such as blood, paint, dust and dirt, among others. And letter B, or the second one will be molded prints, those that are made visible to a contact of a subject, hands and fingers, to some soft objects that can assume the pattern of the finger once compressed such as those molded in soap and clay, among others. Invisible Latin prints generally refers to those prints that are made due to the sweat present in the fingers and thumb of a person that is transferred to any object that he holds. This is one of the common types observed in the scene of a crime. Aside from these two general categories of prints, the third one will be the semi-visible Latin prints. Prints can be made based on their appearance such as smudge prints and fragmentary prints. Smudge prints are those prints that are indistinct due to the sliding motion of the fingers at the time they are impressed. Fragmentary prints are those prints that show only a portion of the pattern or of the friction skin. Postmortem fingerprinting, the taking of fingerprints of deceased person. It has become one of the primary methods of identification for victims of natural and human disasters including casualties of conventional warfare. And thank you for watching. I hope you have learned something today. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel at Serda and don't forget to hit the like button. See you on my next topic. God bless.